you're screenwriting now Hallmark movies. You have your own Nancy Grace brand. But much of that, again, was built on your cable news years. When I look at O.J. Simpson... Covers, oh, dear Lord. Um, <laughs> exactly. Oh, 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 let me tell you something about Orenthal James Simpson. <laughs> okay. Simpson is now suing somebody for claiming he was, I, I think, drunk or disorderly somewhere. Do you really still keep for up defamation? How come he's not suing when I say, you're a double murderer? <laughs> Why doesn't he sue over that? Wow. Funny how the truth is a complete defense. You are, some people think you are, were obsessed with the case, as the nation was. So you clearly still keep okay, up with so OJ. Okay, so a mommy practically gets her head chopped off in the driveway. No, no, I, I understand. And that's, I, I'm yeah. outraged that Do would happen. Do you keep up with him and his... Do I keep... No, we're not pen pals or no. anything like that. <laughs> Do you keep up, though, with, you know... He Only when he uh, shows he came out. up on Twitter, for example. He joined Twitter. With a threat. That's the first so thing So you do keep did. up with him? I was told. <laughs> Let me ask you about... It this. was forced okay. upon me. One of the, the first things that came to my mind, in addition to just everything you've covered, is back when you started covering crime... You know, you crime, need to hand that skirt up, because it's not short enough. <laughs> I'm afraid to look down there. I don't know what I might see. <laughs> when your daughter has one at 13, call me. She already has one of these. It's not a skirt this uh -uh. short. She already she's got has her, one. Did you see that skirt? She's got her ears pierced, and Aunt Tamron's mini skirt is going to be mailed that? to her. I'm saving it. I'm saving it for when it Listen, really matters. Nancy, I've got to ask you, though. I mean, as I said, Honey, that's start. what she was wearing to church. I'm not complaining. <laughs> Let me ask you about the way crime is covered, because you said you're tired of kind of the fakeness and you were always real. People look at crime and they say, if you're not a white blonde girl, they don't care about you, um, that all of this, the way we cover crime was dehumanizing. When you look at your legacy and how we cover it and what we've learned, what do you think is the greatest growth in this? Well, you know, all the years I practiced in inner city Atlanta, the vast majority of the victims I represented were women, children, and minorities, mm -hmm. African Americans. But we don't always and see that in TV coverage. That's true. And I would advise people to go to crimeonline.com, mm. my website, where every crime victim or missing child or missing person that I find out about, and I started about 4.30 in the morning looking, is sent and posted and Facebooked and Instagram and tweeted so out. So this is your passion. This is your yes. life calling. I felt that after my fiance's murder, just before our wedding, you had asked me about becoming a Shakespearean literature professor. I dropped out of school. I lost down to about 89 pounds. I couldn't eat. I had to have my mom turn off the clocks in the house because I could not stand to hear the tick, tick, oh my tick. Gosh. I didn't know what I was going to do. My sister was a professor at the Wharton School at that time, and I went to go be with her. And I saw students coming in and out of the bookstore, and I had the idea to go back to school, to law school, to be a prosecutor. I want you to hang that thought.